Now here the startling fact. The World Health Organization reports that over 1 billion young people are at risk of hearing loss due to unsafe listening practices. Another startling fact. Unfortunately, loss of hearing is not as easily perceived as is loss of vision. Hence, it is often missed or overlooked. People wait, just imagine, people wait an amazing average of 10 years for getting help for hearing loss. Ask yourself this question. Do you or somebody in your family answer to these? For example, do you need to increase the volume of your television? Do you find it difficult hearing conversations and more than two people are talking? Do you struggle to comprehend if there is background sound? Are you needing to repeat yourself to someone in your family? Most importantly, are people at home telling you that you can't hear? We all get ourselves checked up by doing a regular blood test, an x-ray, a sonography, test for our eyes. But ask yourself, when was the last time you got testing for hearing? Due to the wide adoption of smartphones, and change in work habits like remote working, headphones have become an integral part of our daily lives. Whether it's for enjoying music like I do, podcasts, gaming or making calls. While they provide convenience and enhance our audio experience, improper use can lead to serious consequences for our hearing. Now I'm not here to scare you into never using headphones again, but I do want to arm you with the knowledge to protect your hearing while still enjoying your favorite tunes. So let's dive in. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Sanjay Arora. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I help you unburden your health. Today we are delving into a topic that affects many of us. The impact of headphone use on our hearing health. First, some noise shattering statistics. Hearing loss affects a staggering more than 50% of people over the age of 70. Even more alarming, noise-induced hearing loss on the rise among younger people, especially due to increased headphone use. And uncorrected hearing loss carries a significant risk for dementia. But now let's talk science. What exactly happens in our ears when you listen to loud sounds? The primary risk associated with headphone use is noise-induced hearing loss or NIHL. NIHL occurs when we expose our ears to loud sound, damaging the delicate hair cells in our inner ear. Inside the inner ear, there are tiny hair cells responsible for translating sound vibrations into electrical signals that the brain interprets as sound. When exposed to loud noises, these hair cells can become damaged or even die off. Unlike other cells in the body, damaged hair cells cannot regenerate, leading to permanent hearing loss. You can listen to sound at 70 decibels or lower for as long as you want. But what is 70 decibels? A whisper is 30 decibels, while a siren is 120 decibels. So 70 falls somewhere in between. Prolonged exposure to sounds at 85 decibels can lead to hearing loss if you listen to them for more than eight hours at a time, increasing the risk of damaging those delicate hair cells. Listening to music or watching videos at the maximum volume that is possible on a smartphone that is between 105 and 110 decibels can cause hearing damage within five minutes. Imagine if you can hear what anyone else using a headphone is listening to, stop them because it's too loud and it's definitely going to damage their hearing. At 60% of maximum volume, the decibel level is under 70. That should be our target setting. Listening to music all day at this level is fine. However, at levels higher than this, say 80% of maximum volume, one should stop listening within 90 minutes to 120 minutes for that day. It's not only the volume that matters, but also the duration of exposure to loud sounds. Listening to loud music or other audio through headphones for extended periods, such as long commutes, work shifts, or while exercising can significantly increase the risk of NIHL. The longer the exposure, the greater the cumulative damage to the hair cells in the inner ear. This damage can lead to various types of hearing loss, the most common being sudden or sensory neural hearing loss. This is also colloquially called as heart attack of the ear. Symptoms usually include a sudden blocked ear, often overnight or within a few days, sometimes accompanied by tinnitus and or with dizziness. People developing this condition often link it to a common cold or sometimes other viral infections which unfortunately delays their visit to a doctor. Sudden sensory hearing loss, also known as sudden deafness, is an unexplained rapid loss of hearing loss, typically occurring in one year over a period of 72 hours or less. It is considered a medical emergency 
and immediate evaluation and treatment may improve the chances of recovery. Sensory hearing loss is usually permanent because the damaged hair cells in the inner ear do not regenerate. Conductive hearing loss occurs when sound is blocked from reaching the inner ear due to issues like ear wax, fluid buildup, eardrum damage, or middle ear bone, or damage to the middle ear bones. Treatments vary from just clearing the ear in your wax to hearing aids to cochlear implants and surgery. Mixed hearing loss. This type combines sensory neural and conductive hearing loss affecting both inner and outer or middle ear. Treatment involves a mix of surgical intervention, hearing aids or cochlear implants. Auditory neuropathy spectrum disorder or ANSD. This disrupts sound transmission to the brain despite normal sound entry to the ear. The causes include inner ear, hair cell damage, genetic factors, or auditory nerve damage. Treatment may include hearing aids, cochlear implants, or visual communication techniques seen for severe cases. Let's look at some of the common misconceptions about headphone use and bust these myths. Number one, noise cancelling headphones are often perceived as safer because they reduce external noise, allowing listeners to listen to lower volumes. The reality is, while noise cancelling headphones effectively reduce external ambient noise, they can also lead users to inadvertently increase the volume to compensate for the reduced external sound. Misconception number two, in-ear headphones cause more damage as compared to over-the-ear headphones. The reality is, it doesn't really matter what device you use. It is the duration and the volume of usage that will cause hearing damage. Now, here's something you might not expect. Exercise can actually benefit your hearing. A fascinating study in the Journal of Neuroscience found that cardiovascular fitness improved hearing sensitivity in mice. The researchers discovered that exercise promotes blood flow to the cochlea and reduces inflammation in the ear. Cochlea is the inner ear. So hitting the gym isn't just good for your waistline, it's also good for your ears too. But wait, there's some more good news on the hearing front. Recent studies have shown some surprising benefits of addressing hearing loss. A groundbreaking study from Johns Hopkins found that hearing aids could help slow cognitive decline, especially in older, less affluent individuals. This is huge because it suggests that treating hearing loss might be a way to maintain brain health as we age. Researchers also found at the University of Colorado that consistent hearing aid use by older adults was associated with a lower risk of falls. This makes sense when you think about it. Better hearing means better awareness of your surroundings. Now let's talk about prevention. Here are some practical tips to protect your hearing while still enjoying your music. Follow the 60-60 rule. Keep the volume at 60% of the maximum and limit your listening sessions to 60 minutes. Take breaks in between to give your ears time to recover. Use noise cancelling features wisely. They are beneficial in noisy environments, but avoid turning up the volume excessively. Experts also advise cleaning the headphones on a regular basis to avoid getting ear infections. More than 90% of people forget to clean the headphones and the earbuds after using them for a day, which puts the ear at risk of infections. Be aware of the early signs of hearing damage. If you experience ringing in your ears, muffled hearing, or difficulty in understanding speech in noisy environments, it's time to see your doctor. One more thing, if you're a smoker, here's another reason to quit. Smoking can actually contribute to hearing loss by reducing oxygen supply to your inner ear. The nicotine and carbon monoxide in cigarettes can tighten blood vessels, including those that supply oxygen to the delicate hair cells in your inner ear. Remembering your hearing health is a crucial part of your overall well-being. It affects your ability to communicate, your social life, and even your cognitive health. The good news is that with a few simple habits, you can protect your hearing while still enjoying all the benefits of our audio-rich world. So whether you're a music lover like me, a podcast addict, or just someone who uses headphones for work, I hope this information helps you make informed decisions about your hearing health. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. So until next time, this is Dr. Sanjay Arora signing off, helping you unburden healthcare and unburdening your health. Stay healthy, stay curious, and keep those ears happy.